you ask me, I came out like real housewife. I'm sorry. This is the opening of the show. And um, the, uh, the, we, I'll be honest. This is Howie Mandel. This is Howie Mandel does stuff. Go ahead. Jackie, tell him. I'm who Jacqueline you. Schultz. I didn't even know that the song was playing because I'm not there. I know. Uh, J- Jacqueline is a little, uh, she's staying away from me because I'm doing AGT right now and I'm just uh, isolating myself. So I'm alone. Well, I'm not alone. I'm going to have guests today and everything. She doesn't want to be around me because I'm around audiences and stuff like that. And you have little kids. I get it. I get it. I'm not going to yeah. make fun of you for being neurotic and wanting to stay home. We we got big guests today and everything. Also, uh, Caroline, who uh, started the show, like she's uh, our producer on the show, she hit uh, the the play button for the opening music. But uh, Jackie has already been talking and has already finished two subjects before we even started the show. And I'm here to tell you that those subjects went swimmingly. They were probably our best discussions we've had yet on Howie Mandel does stuff. I think we resolved some major problems i think we answered questions i think we informed the audience and really and then and then caroline played the opening theme song and now we are starting the show in the middle of the show if that makes sense to anybody but you know you're halfway through the show so feel free to um get up now and have a snack and then we'll continue (laughs) why were you talking before you even heard the music jackie because aren't you supposed to talk to your dad? You came on, you were in here, and so I decided to talk to you. It's no, not, but you did, you did more than talk to me. You covered two of the, the subjects we're already covering. Um, we were talking we about that. We can go over it again. Yeah, but you already talked about the surprise that we're going to have for everybody later on in the podcast. You've done too much before anything even started. But let's go. Okay. So right. How have you been? But- I <laughs> doesn't look like I've been okay. I'm not even in the same room. <laughs> but yeah. but I am out of the closet. And for those of you that are just watching now, maybe this is like your first episode. When we started this podcast, I wasn't feeling comfortable coming in to the office then either. And because we started it at the height of the pandemic pretty much. And so I locked myself in the closet and I was doing the whole podcast from the closet. So I'm finally out. I feel like this is a better background. Wow. What an exciting day when your daughter comes out of the closet. I'm telling you, this is, uh, I'm thrilled. And one day you'll come out of the closet, you'll come out of the house, you'll get in the car and you'll come here again. No, I do sometimes. I know sometimes, but now I'm, you know, for the rest of the summer, I'm in front of large audiences. So you're nervous. She thinks I'm a pariah. Wait, should I not, should I not come back for the rest of the summer? I'm not, it's not, it's your mind, not me. This is okay. you, not me. Okay. But you're still okay. here. This is how we kind of communicated throughout the whole pandemic. Anyhow. I want to know though, like I see right now, what's going on like I see my picture and I can kind of hear myself but I'm wondering if it's really good quality or really bad quality I kind of want to hear from people because they don't really hold back when it comes to commenting I don't know if you read all the comments on our YouTube channel quality of quality of what like the sound they always talk about the sound they always talk about the lighting they always talk about the picture and the camera and the setups like you know what if they're talking about the sound and the lighting And that then we're not doing our job because just listen to us. I mean, because if that if sound quality is is kind of over is kind of they're talking about the sound quality over the content, then the content is boring. Is that okay? So let's let's change. So try to do some content. (laughs) Okay. okay. Is there something you want to talk about? We've got a lot of things today, so hurry. Uh, Okay. There is something I wanted because to talk about. Because if you about. want to talk about it, then it should be come up right at the meet because it's important for us to hook the audience. Well, like you said, you are going back to AGT. This is your first show that's live, right? Well, Which- I don't know. Uh, yes, yeah, so you're probably hearing this like a week later. But uh, yes, yeah. so we've, we've already started the, the week. But what do you want me to, wh- why? Is this leading like you to something? I feel like we should talk about the biggest news that's coming out of AGT right now. Also, one of the saddest news stories is Simon's golden buzzer that can't continue. Nightbird. Um, yeah. yeah, that is absolutely heartbreaking, debilitating. Um, her name is Jane. 
Marzuski, I, I call her Nightbird because I can't pronounce her last name, but this beautiful, for those that aren't following AGT, I don't assume everybody is, um, Simon's Golden Buzzer this year was this beautiful young lady who just turned 30 and um, we didn't know, you know, it was really a surprise to us. People always ask, do the judges know before people walk out what's going on? We don't. And uh, through asking her some uh, questions, we found out that um, she has cancer and uh, she had, she said on air that she had a 2% chance, a 2% chance of survival. And her take on that was, well, it's not zero, you know? And I thought she, that was incredibly uh, motivating and surprising and aspirational and inspirational. And um, since then, um, she got, I think a lot of people know she was on CNN and she made an announcement on Instagram that she got some devastating news that the cancer had spread uh, more into her lungs and her spine. And uh, she said she has more cancer in her liver than she actually has liver. Um, it doesn't look good, but she wants to um, focus on this last push. There's a GoFundMe page, actually, where you can help her um, pay for the, uh, the treatments, but this final push to try to survive, and she's going to put her focus and her aim and all her energy into that, and she's withdrawing from the show. And reading that and seeing that and watching her on Chris Cuomo, um, the things that she said... Uh, we're so, she's like beyond human. She just seems, so, it, it's, it's so beautiful and so brilliant. And so she's like one of those motivational posters, you know, for how precious life is and what each moment means. And our, everybody at AGT, our hearts and our prayers go out to her and her family. I can't imagine what it's you know, like. Go ahead. Do you know if anyone's reached out to her mm -hmm. i know simon is like a very loving caring affectionate which you wouldn't know from watching him I, I get i think now people might know and get that because he's calmed down a lot but when you first watched him on like Amer or, um, american or um idol yeah yeah he was like that tough guy and he's not at all he's no very sweet and nice and caring and so i was wondering do you know if he reached out to her at all i do he has and he talks mm -hmm. to her and he talks to her father and um, did you see her on Chris Cuomo? No, I don't watch. I try not to watch the news, honestly. Right well, now. this is, is, are we able to play a little clip from her on Chris Cuomo? Are we able to do that? Because she was so amazingly inspiring. And this is on the heels of this devastating news, which is, you know, the doctor just telling her that week that uh, you know, cancer is ravaging her body, and also, you know, I don't know how you take that news. I don't know how you are even able to stand up. But you look at her, and she's so stunning in every way. You know, just beautiful inside and out. It's it's horrible, but maybe there's a purpose. You know, I think we all have just a purpose. Just something crazy. Uh, so go ahead. <laughs> I, <laughs> that was our uh no production is uh that was um i don't know what that was but that it was okay advertising <laughs> but not one that's on our show right that was one that's yeah. okay caroline and leave that in jeremy you don't have to edit it we have to show i like to show the people that <laughs> we're not as slick as everybody thinks we are everybody thinks so, here here we are watch this but um <clears throat> well to tell you the truth i have been curled up in a ball like a little cocktail shrimp having in a plus pity party for myself because um, it's just been it's been a, a bad bad month it's been really pretty devastating metastatic cancer moving around your body you were told you needed to take the treatment 100 percent seriously what did that mean to you as a trade-off for your dream of performing um you know what i i'm not a quitter so it was really, really hard for me to uh, to say that I couldn't finish the show. I, I got shocking news less than a week ago about um, cancer regrowth um, that's taken over my lungs and liver. Um, so my liver right now is mostly cancer, more cancer than liver in there right now. 
Um, but it, like I said, like I said, I'm, I'm planning my future, not my legacy. And some people would call that, um, you know, blind denial, but I prefer to call it, um, rebellious hope. And, uh, I'm, I'm not stopping anytime soon. No perspective. So there that's, you know, that's, I love that message, you know, and uh, rather than blind optimism, it's rebellious hope. And, you know, I, I'm one who really believes that hope is very, very powerful. And the minute you give up hope, you just give up, you know, in life. And that goes for anybody. So she always has a really strong message. And even though she's withdrawn from uh, this year's contest, I think that she is still the voice and the face of uh, season 16 on America's Got Talent. Well, before I forget, that also reminds me that we should talk about Cuomo. But, but um, I wanted to also ask, and maybe this is a bad time to ask this because I don't think like people loved her because she wasn't talented or anything like that. But this is like an ongoing trend in America's Got Talent. This story kind of brings me to that, is that people vote for stories, right? And like their struggles and what they're dealing with and stuff like that. Do you think that more people vote for those stories and that connection with the contestants than their actual talent? And I'm not saying that's the case with her, so don't get mad at me or anything. I, mean, I don't it get mad. People me. ask that all the time. And, you know, yeah. people, I don't think there's anybody alive right now that could mm -hmm. show up anywhere that doesn't have a story. Maybe not as devastating as this, but there is a story. And I know that sometimes the contestants feel the need to use those stories. I think ultimately at the, you know, in the audition, when people meet them, Sometimes that hits them, and 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 I'll be honest. Sometimes it hits us, and you know, talent is subjective, but the whole person is not. And when you see somebody showed up even through a struggle, and they're able to capture an audience, and they love, you know, sometimes the best singer is not the biggest star, even in real life. So, yes, I think the story does lean into sometimes um, people's perspective on how talented they are. But that being said. Once they've gone through the audition and in normal years, you know, you see them in the middle rounds or even at the finals, a couple times, the quarterfinals and then the finals, that story is already gone. And then it's only about their talent by the end. You know, yeah, I think that when they see everybody and they see who they're up against. So I think that that gets them, gives them a little bit of a push, but I don't think that gets them to the finish line. Yeah. Speaking of stories, though, I don't want to forget that I wanted to bring this up. Since you were playing Cuomo, did you hear about Andrew this morning? That's his brother. That wasn't the other, you know. No, I know, but it reminded me. Did you hear about his brother? Um, the t touchy feely. The he resigned this morning. Oh, so you're a week out. We're going to be a week out, so that's not going to be big news. But it's yeah. Okay, but for me, right in the moment, it's big news. I wanted to ask you. I had no idea. I hadn't read. He resigned. He should. He yeah. Do you think that it was, it's too late? I think he, not it's too late, but I think he should have resigned a long time ago. Well, we could have that discussion. I think he should resign. Mm -hmm. um, I truly believe that it isn't an excuse when you don't know. Mm -hmm. I think he legitimately, this is not an excuse. I think mm -hmm. he doesn't know how to behave properly around, uh, you know, ladies. <laughs> Is this his only punishment then that he resigns and he's no longer governor? Shouldn't he be held? Well, that's not a, that's what he did. Uh, yes, but that's up to the. Uh, I don't have a dog. You know that. I do. I could tell. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to let people to know that we that you're at home and you're out of the closet and there's a lot of barking going on. But maybe Milo, who that is the sound of, uh, agrees with me. I think that whether it is taken any further is up to the victims, you know? So if they feel that they want to take it further and have a civil case or sue him or charge him, then that's, I, I don't know enough about it, but I, th that isn't, you know, I, I don't know that public opinion, you know, weighs into these kind of things as much as, you know, what 
people's personal feelings are? Well, I believe that public opinion should weigh more into it. Maybe not in the case of what the victims should do and whether or not they want to press charges, but in the sense that he was the governor, I think when these, um, these, not stories, these allegations came out at the beginning and he didn't want to resign, I don't think it was about resigning regardless. <laughs> Your background just fell down, Dad. <laughs> Anyways, I don't think it was about resigning only if he was found guilty. Like when you are the governor or you hold office or you're in charge of a city or a state or the country or anything, and then there's something preventing you from doing your job and people lose trust in you or there's all these stories and it becomes more about what's happening in that story than you actually governing, then I think it's time to step down. I agree. But and but that wasn't the question. The question was, do you think he should be charged afterwards? And I think that that is totally up to the the people that are um, bringing forth these allegations, right? Like I don't, yeah. uh, you know. And you, if you felt, if God forbid, you were one of those young ladies and you felt, hey, I've been groped and I've been, and I want them to pay for this. I want him to pay for this. It like it, then that's your. Isn't that your prerogative as the victim or is that? No, it's always the prerogative of the victim. I think the victim has the final say in whether or not they decide to okay. press charges. Okay. Um, we'll continue talking. Uh, my buddy Jose is going to try to put the uh, <laughs> it back up. Okay. <laughs> what? We, it's just so noisy. <laughs> it's not noisy. There's not going to be any drilling. It's mostly taping, and it's a uh, it's a ladder, and uh, people should see. We don't stop for nothing. The show must go on. Well, I do have something else that I wanted to talk about. Okay. Did you hear about Machine Gun Kelly and um, Travis Barker getting matching bro tattoos? Yeah, but the, the, this is his horns. Uh, this new. I have horn. What is the name of this? Born with horns. Born with horns, which I thought when I read that, I thought, "Oh my gosh, they're doing a uh, uh, they're doing a new album about us Jews." Because <laughs> don't Do you people? Know I actually no, I actually got asked one time um, if I had horns and if they could feel my horns. Who did you ask if you could feel the horns? I didn't ask. Someone asked me when they found out I was Jewish. Right. One of my students. I my, love that. My first year teaching. Um, uh, we'll put up the picture, Jeremy, of uh, born with horns tattoos. It's like, uh, I don't know who came up with the idea, let's get tattoos, but did somebody say to Travis, and where are you going to put yours? And he said, when you look at it, doesn't matter. Where just, is it? I didn't even see where it is. It's, well, it's on top of five other tattoos. It's like just, <laughs> there's no, either of them, it seems like Machine Gun Kelly's got a little more space for it. But uh -huh. uh, Travis just said, yeah, put it on top of a bunch of others and just make it darker. So now it's like pages and pages of layers and layers of tattoos. Yeah, he has no more room. I'm looking at the picture now. He has no more room. But he put it on top of others. So I didn't realize that you can stack tattoos. He's got a tattoo stack. Yeah. He just wanted it in the same place as his friend. To me, this is so silly. Like, do bros... I've heard of people getting tattoos of their significant other which i think is isn't that bad luck sorry couldn't hear you over the tape yeah go ahead <laughs> i've heard of people getting tattoos with their significant others which i believe is bad luck i haven't really, really heard yeah oh you're right because people are always changing the names i've seen even heidi heidi on the show you know she had seal written on her mm -hmm. arm and she had that laser removed that's why they broke up because she removed the tattoo or they broke up and then she removed the tattoo? Because she got the tattoo of his name. You are not supposed to get a tattoo of your significant other's name. Really? Mm-mm. I didn't know that. Go ahead. Do you have that? Uh, Caroline uh, wants to... Uh, <laughs> no, I, I don't have a tattoo of the significant other. I'm just thinking if you guys were to get t matching tattoos, what would you get? Me and my daughter? Yeah. My mom and I have matching tattoos. Um... <laughs> 
I would just have a, I would get a big tattoo on my lower back that says to, and it would be a message, dear Jackie, don't get a tattoo. It would be a tramp stamp to, uh, with a message. I don't know. What, would we get a matching tattoo? We should get matching tattoos. Maybe we'll do it on the really? podcast. We used to get like matching ear piercings. Yeah, I know. We, I don't know. I think I've talked about that before. Every time my daughters wanted to get uh, pierced, I would go to Claire's with them and get the, a, a matching pierce. So I've got a bunch of piercings. But I you still never have got my, your belly button pierced with I me didn't my wear my belly button pierced, but I wore a clip on for two years <laughs> on my belly button. Yeah. I told you what I would get, right? What tattoo I would get? Uh, okay. What, what, the ca- the, the camel. camel on my toe. A camel on your toe. That's what I would get. I'm watching. I, can you, I don't know if you could see behind me, but that's how we're fixing it now. Just tape. Was I just a tape? You're just going to hold it with the tape? Okay. Okay. I'm going to make something out. Okay. It just doesn't, you, could, you know, you could see that you can see the tape. Well, yeah, you could see that, like you could see the, sorry, Jackie, and sorry for our podcast listeners, um, the thing behind me on the wall fell off during the podcast, but we don't stop for nobody. And um, <laughs> This is definitely an episode that, you should be watching on YouTube. <laughs> no, but so he, uh, we asked a, an expert to come in and rehang it, but you've just taped it. It's just tape to the, I thought there would be more involved in making sure that this can you see it jackie from where you are i can see it and i can hear it (laughs) but it's just a bunch of tape it's like a like a it's like a wall boo-boo it's just fixing it go ahead what did you tell me about that what is that actually this is another thing during the pandemic your mother has been going and i know she is she's amazon crazy Mm -hmm. you know she just orders stuff all the time i hear her on the phone every day to you going there's a surprise coming well, then it's not a surprise, Terry. Did it get there? And she's got a tracking. There's a surprise. It just arrived five minutes ago at the front door. Don't leave it outside, right? She calls you every day. Every day. So she ordered this is a rug, which she thought would be funny to have a rug in the middle of the room that has an optical illusion that you're falling into this hypnotic hole. I don't know what room she thought that this would be good in. There's no room in our house where, and it's just the two of us. Oh, look at the, come in here, but watch out. Don't fall in the hole. I don't know what she was thinking, but this came and she goes, isn't this neat? I go, yeah. What's it for? And she goes, we could put it on the floor. And I said, no. But then I, in this room, I decided to put it on the wall. But apparently, um, how are we going to put it on the wall? I couldn't think. And we called, it's a lot of tape. You hear all the tape? <laughs> I'm not, I think that people, uh, let's just call this episode Howie, Jackie, and Velcro, because it sounds like a lot of Velcro, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, that's better. Uh, See? You can hear him bang. <laughs> Why are you laughing? It's so ridiculous. It looks good. It looks good now, because you, you don't notice the tape. It's not about whether or not I, it looks good. I just you know think- we could see the tape, right? You don't see it? No. Okay. I'm not. He said you can't see the tape. Do you really think you can't? It's you an can't optical see that? illusion. It's an optical no. illusion, Dad. Pardon me. Black, black spot. It's just a black <laughs> spot. Yeah. Black spot. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. See, it's done. It's done. That's. It doesn't get better than that. People are going. How does that even stay up on the wall? They don't know. That's uh, fantastic, Jose. That's amazing. Here, do you need a hand? Keep talking, Jackie. Bring up the next subject. There's so there's so much noise too. This is the most ridiculous thing. Not only do we have ladders and Velcro tape, but also moving a chicken that keeps making sounds. Yeah. (laughs) It's Jose. Thank you, Jose. All all done? Yeah. Oh wow. It's 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 definitely an illusion. Yes, it's an illusion. It seems like there's tape. <laughs> it's an optical illusion. How's that even staying? How's that hole staying on the wall? <laughs> Don't give away the magic. 
If you have figured it out at home or you're watching this on YouTube and you know how this is done, a lot of people will watch our podcast and then play it back in slow motion to see how these effects are achieved. Don't give this one away. I love illusions. This is the most half-assed podcast I've ever been a part of or seen or listened to. Okay. McDonald's. <laughs> McDonald's? Yeah. What about McDonald's? Explain to me the new meal that they have there. I watched on the news the other day. Um, uh, oh, so Weedy? So Weedy was there with her new Happy Meal or whatever that is. What is that? She, uh, they let her, first of all, I love her. She was just on Paris Hilton's new cooking show, which if you haven't watched that, you should watch it. I'm going to watch it. Okay, it's on Netflix. And she also always posts like her cooking and her food and stuff like that. So I guess it made sense that they gave her her own meal. I don't know what's in her meal, but there's But they also, don't change like, something. There's not a Saweetie like burger. There's a, isn't it just no, it's like it's a just, Big Mac, did, fries. Yeah. Well, here it is. It includes a Big Mac, four-piece chicken McNuggets, medium fries, medium Sprite, and tangy barbecue sauce. And that's named, uh, oh, and, and renamed the sweet and sour sauce. What is that? Oh, that's what it's called. The barbecue sauce is now renamed sweet and sour. Barbecue sauce, so you can't rename a sauce with a new taste, <laughs> right? That's like ketchup is now renamed mustard. You can't do that, can you? I don't know. If you had, if McDonald's came to you and said that you can make your own meal, what would it be? That's exactly what I would do. I wish they would do that, that you were allowed to go. And don't, don't worry, I'll go in the back and I'll get it. Like, Wait, I'll make it. isn't that what everyone does? What? Everyone, everyone makes their own meal. It's whatever That's you what order. You yeah. <laughs> That's why I said I don't understand. Like, if somebody <laughs> says, I want a Big Mac, I want a large fries and a large Coke, then you go, oh, my God, what a great idea for a meal. Let's call that the Howie Mandel. I don't really understand. I thought that there would be something that would be different in Saweetie's meal besides it's, renaming barbecue sauce sweet and sour sauce. That's the only thing. That, go ahead. Barbecue sauce isn't sweet and sour sauce. No, they by said the way, they renamed it. But sweet and sour sauce is actually an already a sauce for like Chinese food, right? Okay. Yeah, I don't know if that's politically correct. Why? I don't know that's what the pronoun get... is. For their food. Yes. <laughs> it's supposed to be for their food. And us, no, too. No, I and just us. mean... Oh, Alex, Dad. There is a sauce already that's sweet and sour that is distinctly different from barbecue sauce. How come when you so, start to get annoyed with me, you think it's your husband? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sweet and sour is a sauce at McDonald's. I married someone who's exactly right, like my but it, but you realize that they said that the tangy barbecue sauce and a renamed oh and a renamed sweet and sour sauce. I read. Yeah, it wrong. that's already one of their popular sauces. Right, but if they have a pot, that's my son Alex speaking. Alex, if they already have, explain to me what this is. Then, like they didn't. Why is that her meal? Why is that? Like why is that? And the crowd that showed up. They, to they have just a, they just rename uh, the the sauce that they already have and give it a fun name, but they don't change the sauce at all. No, that's not what I'm asking. Oh, what are you asking? Why does she have her own meal, but it's really just what she orders of their stuff? Uh, well, who was it that made Marketing. this famous to have like their own personal meal? Who was that? It was Travis Scott. Oh, it? Travis yeah, Scott. That's what I'm pulling up. Yeah, and so it's ever since then, it blew up, and everyone waited in line to get, like, his meal. Oh, you're so right. Okay. Travis Scott comprises a quarter pounder with cheese, french fries, and a large Sprite. The quarter pounder includes bacon and lettuce, and the fries come with barbecue sauce. The Sprite, as the McDonald's site clarifies, is served straight up. So you, wow. just, you, just, you just eat like your favorite uh, celebrity. You know, there's a lot of rappers named after foods. Oh. Foods, you know that, right? I did not know. Yeah, that. salt and pepper, iced tea, Peppa. the black eyed peas, vanilla ice, juicy J, DJ mustard, all foods. Therefore, that's sweetie. It just meant sweetie. That's sweetie. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, well, that's a good point. That was a good point, and uh, <laughs> good point, Rich. Thanks. <laughs> all right. That's so there you go. There's a bunch of information for you guys. And you could just, I don't get it. Um, also going back to earlier news when we had, remember we had Steve-O here? Yeah. Do you know that, and we were talking about BAM? 
Yeah. Do you know that he sued uh, Johnny Knoxville and Jeff Tremaine for uh, firing him off the movie that we talked about here on the podcast? Wrongful termination. I heard this a little bit. I don't know the details. I have to look in. Or does anyone back there know the details? I know that Seth and Kyle and they all follow him. And so they probably more, know more than I do. But I did hear that he's suing because they kicked him off. The movie. I don't think he's suing Steve-O, right? No, the two people, uh, Jeff Tremaine and uh, Johnny Knoxville, the two people that are the executive producers. It's they own the uh, the rights to Jackass. And what apparently, is he claiming? He, um, so Jeff Tremaine is the director. Uh, he and and Jeff Tremaine. Uh, this was like in May, back in May. He got a restraining order. Uh, he was granted a restraining order, a three-year restraining order against BAM. So uh, he he's claiming or alleging that uh, BAM was sending him threatening texts and uh, threatening to harm him and his family and his children. So that uh, I don't know if any this is all alleged, but but what's real is that he was granted the restraining order. Um, it also says in the lawsuit, Margera alleges that Johns, Knoxville, and Tremaine coerced him into signing a wellness agreement. But isn't that standard? Don't people who have a history of like drug use or even mental illness, right? Don't they usually have to sign one of those agreements when they're doing a project or no? Why are you asking me? Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know mental health? I don't know. Said the lady who just got out of the closet. Um, no, I'd imagine someone would make me sign a wellness agreement. Um, no, the, I think that's pretty standard if you have a if you have a history because people are spending millions on a movie. Do you know something, Seth yeah, well, or I'm, Alex? I'm Alex. I'm your son. Um, okay. So they, he's he's upset because he said they didn't even give him an opportunity to show the agreement to his lawyer. And then the reason he was kicked off was for violating that agreement. He tested positive for Adderall. But he's claiming they didn't give him any opportunity to let a lawyer review it or anything like that to see if it was something he should sign. In their defense, even without, uh, oh, we got a special guest just walking in. Um, in his defense, he, um, or in their defense, I don't think they would have changed it at all. It was either sign this agreement the way it is in order to be on our set or don't. Mm -hmm. So he said, he, I'm reading the article right now, and he is saying that he signed it. He didn't show it to his attorney at first, but then the wellness agreement made him um, blow into a breath, breathalyzer three times a day. So a breathalyzer. Can a you imagine if you bl uh, blew into a breathalyzer? Just, <laughs> just put your teeth on the nipple and breathe out. I'm giving you a breastalyzer test. <laughs> and then submit to a urine analysis twice a week, have his hair follicles tested on a regular basis, and take pills every morning while on a FaceTime call with a doctor hired by Paramount. And that the lawsuit claims that he signed the agreement, and then they found Adderall, which he was taking in his system, which he was taking way before even signing the contract, and that was their... That's why they fired him, is what he's saying. Mm. Well, it's uh, it sounds more interesting than it actually is. It's really boring. No, it's not. It's not boring. No. It's boring. No. I, he signed a contract. He didn't, and now he's suing. He's suing them because I think it's going to be a big movie, and he's upset that he's not part of it. But I think he's he's suffering some mental health issues. And then his Jackass co-star, Steve-O, left a comment somewhere noting that the director and co-stars were just looking out for the health and health out of love. So This is Steve all out of love. Everything that is done, everything that I believe in is always out of love. Yeah. Yeah, what? I know you're reading and you're not concentrating. Sorry, I'm reading the article so I can get you know, more information about Can I just say this. something? Read the articles yeah. before the podcast. <laughs> I'm don't a do busy your, mom. You don't do your you don't do your research during the so everybody who's listening take a break we're gonna kind of read and kind of reconfigure and get some information that's what we're gonna do we're gonna I'm gonna take a little break now so we get our information we got a lot of really good stuff coming up we maybe our guests. guest maybe our guest can chime in and tell well, us what we don't he know thinks. what the hell we're talking about you don't know what you're talking about <laughs> the fact that you're just sitting there silently reading articles about things we might want to talk about on today's podcast is a <laughs> Big waste of time.
and not to be done. I don't like people to see the behind the scenes. It's one thing that they saw the magic in hanging the rug behind me, but not how you come up with ideas to talk about. So you do your reading. We're going to take a break. And then we got a real special guest coming up right after this. All right. You know, just so, okay, just wait, Dad. What, just what? so you know, I can't hear any of the stuff going on in the back. So if Rich is talking to you or Alex or anyone's talking to you, I can't respond to it because I can't hear any of it. And then I also can't see or hear anything that's being played on the screen. So just letting you know, I don't know what they're saying. All right. Well, you should have a screen. Anyway, we're back. Uh, during the break, uh, my daughter was. Uh, telling me that because she's working from home and doesn't want to be with me that she can't see what's going on here. So uh, you'll find that her input will have very little to do with what we're talking about in studio, but just enjoy it. It's kind of like a duet where the other person doesn't hear the other person. Anyway, I got a special guest here. You are special. Come on in, buddy. I love this guy. Do you know who's on today, Jackie? Do you know that? Yeah. Who is it? Andrew Santino. Andrew Santino. Yay. Yes. Yay. Been, yay, yay. 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 I, I never know which side to put these. Are they on wrong? Are they on right? The, put them over your ears. He's talking about the headsets. Yeah, but you know what? It was on the wrong way. I don't know. Do I know? Have a, have, a, have a seat. Do you know where you're sitting? I, <sighs> I show everybody. Did you read that, uh, read that plaque on the side there? Do you know where you're, the seat you're Can't in? Can't read. Okay. Can't read. So. so that is the front row. The Tonight Show Fro starring Johnny Carson. Yes. This NBC Studios. Wow. Presented to Howie Mandel. So that seats was the, one, two, three. Yeah. So that was the front row seats one, two, three for the entire run of Johnny Carson when he was out here in California. Wow. And, and now you've had a bunch of mediocre people adorn them in your office. This could have been history and now you've tainted them. These with were, your own taint. Yeah. The, my taint has tainted these chairs. Can't these taint, were going to be great. Can taint taint? Yeah, that's the, I think that's where the word came from. Really? Because mm -hmm. when well, you sit on something, you taint it forever. What is the difference between a taint and a grundle? Grundle and gooch, not for me. Tell a, my daughter. Well, all right. Hey, Jackie. Uh, <laughs> Hi. A grundle, a gooch, a taint, a nifkin are all the same. Those are all references. I've to never the same. heard of nifkin. Yeah, the area between um, your testicular uh, holding uh, area and your anus is a uh, that's a nifkin, a, a grundle, a gooch, a taint. Um, are any of those like uh, medical terms, or are they just all? Uh, they're all urban medical. Dictionary? They're all medical terms, depending on what doctor you go to. Those are all medical. It depends on if you go to an urgent care or Cedar Sinai. Right. Cedars, they'll tell you uh, taint. Right. Urgent care here in the valley. Grundle. Grundle. Oh, wow. Yeah. I had no idea. And women don't have, uh, they don't have that area. It's not, that's not what it's called. It's not called. What's, a, what's it called? Be, uh, Jackie, I Jackie will, knows. Jackie, Jackie what's, your, what's it called? What's it called between, on a woman? <laughs> there is actually, an, is it the franium? The uranium? <laughs> the, it's either the franium or the uranium. It's, yeah, it's definitely not uranium. You that's, should, that's, you should get, uh, you should be clear on what it is. Because you don't want to be around uranium. Yeah, that's really. Does anybody know what bad. it is between the vagina and the anus? As anus? you call it. So, well, and I'm going to look it up. I do research. That's what I do. We do on research show. during do the research. show. I saw that she was doing research <laughs> during the show live, and she it was frustrating you. I could tell. Well, I don't know if it frustrates me as much as it frustrates the audience because sure. they go, "I'm listening to a podcast. Nothing's going on. They yeah. must be researching." She is. This is a podcast. And I am. Anyway, is, has she? Has the perennial. She, Perennial. The perennial. Perennium for men. Perennium. No, but perennial? Perennial. Isn't perennial that's what mean rich, when that's you're having happen a baby? Every, yeah, it's also, it's also called perineum. Perineum. That's the area that's between your anus and the your scrotum. The tissue located between the vagina and the anus is the not a perennial. Perennial, it means it's. <laughs> <laughs> isn't that happen every year or it happens for that's the rest like of your. It's a flower. The a perennial is a flower? Perennial. It is. Yeah, the annual perennial. Ter is, uh, well, Jackie always gets the area between her vagina and her anus mixed up with flowers. It's one and the same. What is it? What? It's, it's perineum. It's perennium, perennium or perineum. No, uh, the, no, the, no there's here. a perennial. I see. There was a perennial. But it's a perennial. It's a perineum. Perineum. It's what's that? M. What's that word there? Uh, perennial. 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 Oh, perennial. Oh, lasting a lifetime. Oh, you, you now change the, the the search to flowers. Yeah. No, let's get out of the garden and back into the groin. 
That's right. Yes. <laughs> Which is also a garden, nonetheless. Perineum, see? Perineum or perineum. Can you use the word in a sentence, in please? The perineum in humans, that's what it says, in humans. In humans, yeah. Where C else would you find Because one? in animals, it's called something else. Okay, the perineum. You keep changing it. In humans is the space between the anus and, and the scrotum, scrotum in, in the, the male. male or the frenulum, mm -hmm. labiorium pudendi. That's what it is. It's, I forgot that word. Pudendi. Pudendi. It's a frenulum labiorum pudendi. Frenulum laborium pudendi. I think I've got an itch on my frenulum. Stop with the, 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 the. I For those that don't know. Go back uh, to the penis there on yeah, the right. Caroline, Caroline is. Uh, why is it bent? Why is what bent? The penis is bent there. That's dangerous. That's a perineum. That's no, the, the, the penis there, the drawing is bent. That's actually a medical condition. It's really sad. Oh, there is a condition where it turns to, where it you're turns. always signaling yeah. to the left. What's that called? When you have a bent, oh, you have that? No, no, but this oh. is what you, Don't this worry, is what I'll it research. Was. I thought you were just holding up your hand. This no, thing. this is if you're making a left or a right turn. You know this in old traffic signals. You'd stick your arm out the window. Right. Have and this is if your penis is bent. You have to do this when you, when you, when you meet a woman, you have to go like this to go, my penis is bent. Do you have to tell a woman before that you're... Jackie, don't you have to tell a woman... Doesn't a man have to tell a woman if his penis is bent? No. And it's called... It's called a... No. Pyron hey, pay, talk about good improv. Pyronese. No. A Pyronese. No. It's called, it's called, it's called uh, Pyrenees. <laughs> Pyrenees disease. Pyrenees. Pyrenees disease. Pyrenees. No, I see the... Isn't no. that a type of dog? A type of puppy? <laughs> yeah. Puppy? I have a Pyrenees. I have a half poodle, half Pyrenees. I have a Pyrenees oodle. oodle. So that's uh, a poodle knees, a poodle knees, a poodle knees, which poodle means knees. your penis is bent into the back of a poodle. That's exactly right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Why Peroni's disease? It's yeah. Peroni's. Peroni's or Pyrenees. Pyrenees or Peroni's. If you have a Pyrenees, call in now. Oh, do you guys take callers? I we can. Let to call in if you guys have a Pyrenees. She uh, can't hear the calls, but if we have a uh, Pyrenees, people can call. I uh, want to know more about it because I am injured. I see the commercials for it. That's pepperoni. There's no commercial. That's, pepperoni. That's pepperoni. No, there is Pyrenees disease commercials on TV. I think uh, our, our our buddy Caroline in the back is just going nuts. There's like pictures. Is of, that that's Caroline that's, right there? That's Caroline. Yeah, a ginge. Yes, one of my own. Fellow ginger. One of yes. my own, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Except she was. She just identifies as ginger. She wasn't born as a redhead. You're a phony, huh? No. I was born a redhead. I'm trans not a ginger. Hawker. Trans yeah. ginger. You're, oh, yeah, that's true. You do look. No, I can tell if it's real. I can tell you're real. You're yeah. not a daywalker. Do you ever have them ask if it's if you dye it? That's my favorite. The People what? ask if, if I dye my hair. They're like, oh, do you, you dye it, right? Because they've seen it on television in different lightings. It looks different. It looks different shades of red. So people are like, you dye it, right? I feel like where would I ever? Makes... Where would I get this color? Where would you yeah. ever be able to Wait find Wait a second. This? If you, uh, just for men, if you were. Uh, no, they don't make this. Trust me. They don't make that? No. Like when you start, you're a young kid. Just now. for freaks is but what we But when you start find. to go gray, will you, will you color it? Uh, you know, no, probably. I don't know. I, well, my grandmother who had red hair, she didn't go gray until she was, I'm not kidding, until she was like almost 70 years old. It wow. stayed like this faded red. Yeah. It just gets more faded, faded, faded. And then it finally went gray. But even still, it still kind of has this like orange hue to it it's very it's strange you yeah. guys have the same color it's close yeah. mine's a little bit more um uh la orange. louder than yours yeah mine's louder than yours yeah. are you dating yeah. now god wanted me to shine a little bit are you dating now and i'm married but i can start dating if you'd like me to <laughs> <laughs> just is your wife a redhead no god no we would never right at tell we would never our kind don't we, we don't, don't uh, we don't mate <laughs> that's like incestual it's just repulsive yeah, we would never. <laughs> it's not that she's not attractive, or it's just we don't. We know it's internal. We know we're born with the knowledge to not have interaction with. My only reference to what you're saying is Lucy and Ricky. I have no idea. Like that. Well, Lucy. ask Caroline. Would Caroline date another redhead? She would not. I'll ask. I'll answer for her. Okay. Right, right <laughs> Caroline. I feel like I would put maybe. Like I feel like a lot of guys have like red beards too. Yeah, but that's different. Pirates. That's different. Those like, are pirates. Arr, yeah. red beard. Right. <laughs> yeah. Those are the men that sail the seas. No, you would never date. You might you might hook up or <laughs> hang out with a redhead, but you would never like be in a serious relationship with one. Yeah, because then you'd look like twins everywhere. It's weird. Then people think weird. you're related. Yeah. The assumption is that we're always related. No, I get what you're saying because, and, and I'm happily married, but I would never date another bald woman. Why not? <laughs> because we know each other and it's just... 
for the same all the same reasons that you just went. I wouldn't assume that you and another bald woman are are related. I just think you're on the same path. Maybe you're connecting. That's like the closest you can get. She's bald, you're bald. That's a big thing in common. When you're both bald, yeah. That's pretty great. You save money on shampoo. <laughs> you're right. You can share hats assuming you have the same size dome. Wow. It's got to be nice to shave each other's heads. I mean, you bick it, don't you bick it? Bick it. Like you, a Bic razor? You bick it. That's what we call it. Bicking it. That's what we call it? Who, yeah. are, who are we? <laughs> I don't you, know the, the redhead pronoun. community. We call it bicking it. Bick it. We talk about people without red hair. You know, we call them, we have names. I don't want to get into it, but what we call you people with your color hair. I have no hair. Yeah, I know. what When you did, you had it. Or Jackie, you know, we call her a name, but I'm not going to say what, what it is. What are you calling my daughter? No, I want to know what it's it is. Bad. It's bad. She'll tell you. Tell her. Tell. What do we call people with not red hair? Caroline? I'm going to let Andrew Loser. answer this. Andrew. <laughs> Go ahead. Losers? No. <laughs> what? <laughs> he doesn't know. Uh, no, it's it's, it's, all right. it's a rude word. How I long have you been it. married? F five. Do you have kids? No. What? Why are you so <laughs> <laughs> No! Why? No. You don't want any? No, maybe. Maybe. I'm not opposed to it. That's, that's always that's a good I don't, prerequisite to be a good parent. I'm not I'm just opposed, not opposed to it. I'm to not it. opposed to it. It would be nice. Does she want kids? I think she feels the same. She it would be nice, but also is she a comic? God no. She's not a redhead. She's a she's human. Not a <laughs> no, she's a human being with like a heart and a soul. Wow. And yeah, no, she would. I think she would. It would be nice too. But also, I think we're at a age where if it didn't happen, okay, we'll just take more vacations. Uh, more questions that have nothing to do with the segues. Give what do you like? What do you like best? Do you like because your show is great? And, Thank you. And that's on FX. F F X X. X. It's all I'm the same. Get, I always get that. It's mixed all the same. Up. FX and Hulu. Hulu is probably the biggest plug because a lot of people that don't have FX, so many people have Hulu now. So it's FX on Wednesday, Hulu on Thursday. Yeah. And he's about to go on tour. And I'm about to go on tour. I'm yeah. I'm everywhere. Oh, and I got to say, your stand-up is hysterical. Thank you. We, we just been, did a show. We did a show together at a Supernova Comedy here in Hollywood. They've opened up a parking lot yeah. in the on Hollywood Boulevard where uh, Andrew and I will go and- Work test, out some stuff. Work out some stuff. But you've been kicking ass. I'm and trying. And it's been really funny. What's your, what, so how many dates are you doing on the tour? 19. 19? Yeah. 19, depending on when this, when this is out, out. When is this out, out? For the world right My, now? Uh, no, this is not live. Uh, within the week. Yeah, so I go to Denver tomorrow, then I do Nashville, um, and then I'm literally doing, I mean, all the dates that I made up for COVID. I'm making up all the dates for COVID. And what about the show? Does the show go back for another season? Because I know that <sighs> you know, Lil Dicky is doing another album, isn't it? A Lil he's Dickie? trying to do, I don't know if he's going to tour. I don't know what he's going to do. We talked the other day, but he, um, I think because of the show, People are begging him to at least put something out because it's been a long time. But he said he just wants to take a little bit of a break because he's producing, writing, acting. It's exhausting. He's also very hands-on with the edit. He's watching every single frame. So where some people can let that stuff go, he doesn't let any of it go. So I think he's going to need just a break. And then if we did go back, we wouldn't go back if we did. I don't know. But we wouldn't go back till like April, till far into the middle of next year. Almost. So you don't know whether it's picked up yet? We don't. Wow. No. FX is kind of interesting like that. Like FXX. They, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. An extra X. The extra X makes them give, they get more time to decide if they want to go back. FX has got to know right away. FXX, they get some time. So maybe, maybe we'll go back. It, it depends on if people care enough. I mean, the network, um, I've never said this before, but I don't mean this in a mean way towards other. I've never been so proud to be on a network before. Wow. Never in my life have I, I've done stuff and I've always been, you know, not to say I wasn't proud on Showtime or ABC or whatever, but I don't know. I just think FX is, um, everything they're creating right now is pretty amazing. Like I think Baskets is great. I, I, I think, uh, what we do in the shadows is one of the best shows I've ever seen on TV. There's a new show called Reservation Dogs is incredible. Um, I just think like they're just making a lot of cool choices atlanta i agree with you but do you really believe that or are you right now kissing no i'm not plugging it no i'm i'm a little too the candid. Network. i'm candid for my I'm, I'm too candid for my own good like i i said stuff about showtime that i was like i'm not you know i don't i don't i, I even said when i was on showtime i never watched showtime i was never a fan of a lot of the things on their slate 
How do you feel about being on my podcast? I'm not a fan. Okay, that's <laughs> fair. <laughs> no, but I, I no, I love you. I no, love but you I think too. I think I genuinely mean it. I'm not kissing FF because I, I have nothing to. I don't care if I, I, it doesn't. I have nothing to like gain from saying I'm proud to be on that network. It doesn't matter. They Are wouldn't you give a calls? shit. Yeah, all day. They wouldn't care <laughs> if I'd said that. But I mean it because I haven't been a part of something where I think the slate is actually cool. And I genuinely, I think Atlanta's a cool show. I just think some of the people they work with, I'm pretty impressed. I've by. never heard somebody come on anywhere and plug every other show on the network more than you're <laughs> plugging your own. I don't care if they watch my show. I like I told I told our showrunner that I think the best show on the network is what we do in the shadows. I've said that a hundred times on my show. I don't. Do they enjoy that when, as you're on the set of your show, they're going, "Yeah, this show's good," but you want a good show. Well, it's not my <laughs> show either. I'm a part of Dave's show, so I like our show, but I also think like. I'm just, when you're in something, it's easier to see the outside. You know, you look at the other things and you're like, look at that shiny thing. I like it. I th I'm proud of our show, but I I've, think I've never had that experience. I think this is like, right now, this is the best podcast in, in the In the world? Right now. This episode, right now, is the best thing I've ever been part of. That's awesome to have that, that kind of disposition. I don't believe it, but, <laughs> and I don't think you believe it, but that's okay. No, I think the show is great. I just think, I just think. Do you that, like acting you know, or stand up? What, what do you like? That? Stand up, stand up first. Me too. By far. Everything I've done, I will never leave stand up. But I you were born a stand, like you, you I always like were going to be that. That's always the answer for every comic. Whenever, I'm always curious to know whether they prefer stand up or acting when they start to get into acting. And yeah. always, every time I hear uh, it, if you're a comic, you love comedy but when i when i was starting out so many comics who were doing great as stand up as stand ups ended up leaving and going in the movies you know michael keaton yeah you know who went on yeah i don't think he went back and did Never. stand up um who else was i'm trying to remember I mean, galifianakis was a phenomenal stand up and then he has since right he might come back but he's pretty departed from the world i don't i don't i don't even i don't know if he tours but he was one of my favorites and i saw him kind of he got so famous as an actor that I think he kind of floated away from stand up. A lot of, a lot Steve of people, Martin, I mean David Letterman. Yeah, all these guys quit. Yeah, they did. So a lot of people aren't in it. A, a lot of people have always looked at it as a great stepping stone to whatever they wanted to do. Right. And then there's a lot of people like you and I who just go if I never get off this stone and take another step, I'm happy. Well, don't you think though that like Steve Martin wrote in his book that he 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 got tired of people coming to see him? Um, for him and not for his act and that's why he decided to quit because people would yell out bits and like I think I think you do you might reach a level of fame where it's easier to walk away and focus on other stuff creatively because maybe they don't really come to see your stand-up anymore you know it always that always kind of it's a fear yeah, to and, me. and it is a fear to me too. And that's why I like showing up to clubs when they don't expect to see right. you and then they're not the Howie Mandel audience, right. you know? So I like, and I love, even after I do a set, I go and ask uh, when I'm out, out of town, I'll say, is there a, still a club open? Right. And I'll drop in at midnight, you know, with three people who have seen too much comedy and drank too much. And th the harder it is, the better it is. But nothing replaces, you know, coming up with something maybe even in the moment or that day, spewing it and getting that immediate reaction. Right. You don't get that from television. You don't get that from films. You no. don't get that. And and also the, and this is a, a personal issue for me, but it may be for you, I'm a control freak. Mm -hmm. So I, I kind of uh, uncomfortable when I do something on stage, uh, not, on, not on the comedy stage, I'm talking about in, in acting, and then I walk around the rest of it. Was that funny? Did that work? Oh, you, you just overthink it. You're like... I wonder if that's work that that worked because I'm doing it six times now, and I've heard myself say it over and over. And then you're like, "We're stand up. You say it once, and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't." But you get to move forward either way. Whereas acting, you got to do it again and again and again and again. And you're like, "I don't know if I hate it or if they hate it or we both hate it." But I just it gets it get it wears on your comedic sensibilities. But also, and any I think your creative sensibility because I think that the. Uh you know, I used to be mad as when I go to a concert and you go, okay, the, uh, to a music concert, and they're not playing their hits. Mm -hmm. And then when you become a comic, you realize, well, I get it. Yeah. I kind of get it. I know that it was fun to write this song. It's fun to uh, release this song and see it 
zoom up the charts to number right. one. But if I have to sing it every night, if I have to do the exact same joke every night, the mm -hmm. same way, and I know it works, I know it's going to get a laugh, but there's nothing really fulfilling right. about delivering the same, you know, you're right. like a pizza delivery guy. But the difference is, and I, this is what I hate about musicians, they can write that one song and they can coast on that for years and we could never write one joke and sell out an arena on one joke. Yeah. Unless but, you blow up a rubber glove on your head. Okay, thank you, Jackie. Yeah. E even still. <laughs> even still. My Jackie. own daughter has my back, huh? Yeah. 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 Wait, well, this is this is kind of um this is kind of karmatic because, you know, we pranked her on my show. I was gonna talk about that. Yes. So yeah, you I pranked guess, her and she was really you were worried, right, Jackie? Um, I was worried that you were going to get mad at me. I wasn't worried that the title of our show was going to change. Mm. That was great. Well, we should tell I them. Think so that, the, yeah, you tell them. Well, you tell them what the prank was. Well, Jackie badly wants uh, wanted the name change to Jackie and Howie Mandel do stuff. And Howie had said, I said, well, let's, I'll call and pretend to be, what did I say I was, a manager or an attorney or something? Yeah, for for podcast nation. I don't podcast know. one. <laughs> yeah, podcast one. The distributor of this very show. Podcast one is what I said, I think. And then uh -huh. and I told I said that we had gotten a request to change the name and I wanted your approval if you were okay with it. And you of course were very much into it. You were like, well, Yeah, you know what's what's yeah, funny let's is do it. I was at my daughter's um, like so school soccer event. Game and mode, soccer. Yeah. soccer game. Yeah. Mode. Normally I wouldn't stay on a call for that long when I'm involved with my kids or my daughter, but that was really important to me. So I stayed on. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <Your> priorities are <laughs> yeah. like, instead of keeping an eye on your daughter who's right. out there in public doing things, as soon as they're talking about the brand name changing to yours, that's what you prioritized. <laughs> are you upset that yes. that never came to fruition? That now you're, it's still not, your name is not on the show? I feel like it should be at least in like small writing in the corner or okay. something. What would you want it? I, I what would you want it called again? What What would you like it change to? I don't care as long as my name is somewhere on there. Let's put you know? a name or on just somewhere. Like, put it on there, I or guess. Like, even the picture, like if just like the back of my head was like in the corner I got somewhere. It. I got so it. I got yeah. it. Guys I got in it. the back. Um, let's do it. Let's make this the podcast where it happens. In this logo, let's change the logo today. No, no, no. No? I got it. He's got it. It's already on there. Okay. You just don't see it. Where is it? You know, on the side of your glasses, it'll have like the brand name. Of, yeah. Yeah, it's already, it's right there. It says Jackie right there on the side of your glasses. So... Do you know that you know it's I have over my, with? It already happened. But you know that I. This is the other thing. Poor Jackie, <laughs> who cares about having your name on everything? You know, yeah. you see these glasses I'm wearing. Yeah. So I have my own line of glasses, and it, it, these are my glasses, and mm -hmm. you can get them at CI Eyewear. And uh, I have, I think there's about seven different styles of glasses that they sell. You can get them online and whatever. And they said you can name each pair of glasses uh -huh. so i named one the jackie one the riley one the al and, and every my family members jackie's is the only one that came out spelled wrong if you go into <laughs> ci eyewear it's and i don't know what they were thinking they spelled it j-a-c-k-y jakey yeah yeah, yeah. Jakey. <laughs> Jakey. 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 <laughs> what glasses are those are those the uh, what what edition are those those aren't those are before i had my own line of glasses. So well, that's those, the way to solve it then. You don't need to physically put her name. Just put the Jakey glasses, uh, <laughs> superimpose those on the back of your head. So then then subversively, you're on the show, whether you know it or not, your name is there. No, I think I'm going to put that, her name because I'll tell you something. I've been doing press for this uh, podcast and it doesn't sell. They go, what is the, what's the podcast? And I go, Howie Mandel does stuff with my daughter, Jacqueline Schultz. Eesh. Yes, that's Yikes. bad. You don't say that. <laughs> I get it. Well, I'm so proud of you. I'm so, I'm so proud of you. The that, delay of you getting that is why your name is not on the show. I, I got to <laughs> be honest. That's why your name is not. Not there. only did it take a long time for her to get, yeah. but she was so proud that yeah. she got such an easy little. <laughs> I get it with I, my dad. Uh, I get it. I get All right, it. so <laughs> give us the title: Howie what Mandel it? does stuff featuring his daughter. I feel like people can comment later on this episode and give us suggestions. Were you mad at Andrew for getting you, for pranking you? 
No. Wasn't my idea, in. by the way. Wasn't my no, idea. I, I was just. She's been pranked her whole life. Okay, good. Yeah, I'm used to it. I wasn't mad. I was more mad finding out that it wasn't real. Like, yeah, not that's, right. that's what I thought. <laughs> she was upset that it wasn't the truth. Yeah. She's the yeah. most competitive out of all my children. She has to be the, th th that sounds like Jackie, right? I'm winning. Uh, uh, she's my little Charlie your, Sheen. She's your little Sheen. <laughs> your little tiger blood. Who, who also. Cub blood. Yeah, who also went, you know, she traveled and to, uh, to go see that tour. Really? Mm-hmm. Tell Wh them. When yeah. was that? In, in Atlantic City, I went to go see Charlie Sheen when he went on tour, and there we got, like, Tiger's Blood merchandise and everything. It was one of the best shows I've ever seen. Really? Really? Yeah. Wow. Really? You've really? gone to yeah. every one of my what? shows, and Charlie <laughs> Sheen was one of the best shows you've ever seen. Who opened for Charlie Sheen? I don't even remember. It doesn't matter. What we does he do? What Charlie. does he do? What did he do? It was nothing. It, everything that you saw during that time, Ranting. like on the, yeah, in the press, uh -huh. that's what we saw live on stage. Wow. So what and is that? Someone came out. Who's who's the guy that does all the roasts? The really Jeff really Ross. funny Jeff Ross. Yes, he was there with him, doing it with him. He so that'd be funny. Jeff is funny. Yeah, yeah. So but Jeff kind of opened the show, so to yeah, speak. Yeah, but. I don't think he could handle like he looked thrown off by Charlie Sheen a little bit. Sure, but yeah. Then Charlie came out. The crowd went crazy. Was it sold out? Uh, yes. Was that the Borgata? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Wow. It That's so great. fun. That's so wild that he's so. How much were the tickets? Do you remember? I don't. It was a long time ago. No, was, but but the truth of the matter yeah. is, her and her husband bought tickets. You bought tickets, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I couldn't get her into that. I, I bought. T they bought tickets. They bought airline tickets and hotel rooms. So that was you flew from L.A. to there. I assumed you were on the East Coast already. No. No. We oh went my just God. For this. <laughs> Are you okay? What it, What was going on in your life that you took a five and a half hour flight across the country to go see Tiger Blood live? Not much. Yeah, not much. Did you not have kids <laughs> yeah. at that time? You guys didn't have kids. No, that's we didn't why. Have kids. Yeah. yeah, and you're allowed. And to... we weren't even married yet. We were. We just started dating. This was like. Was that a dates. date? It's a great date. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, I'll say I'm. A see, super... that's why when you ask me if I want kids, maybe not because look, she can't go see Tiger Blood live now. I could. We could hop on a jet and go see Tiger Blood live. Yeah, and she you can't make me feel bad. She can't do that anymore. <laughs> oh, you you feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad. Yeah. That you had children. You, you could made always a decision. abandon your kids. People do that. Adoption is still an option. How many kids do you have? Two. Yeah. Oh, that's an easy number to get rid of. If it's four or more, <laughs> it's, it seems sketchy. But two seems like you could leave one one place and then give one away. I, you know, when I was no, young, I, people got left. I feel like kids got left at places, and it was like, well, I guess that's not the kid is gone. Wait. What? You saw kids. Not forever. Go, I feel like kids just ended up getting like how many times when we were kids did you see missing child? And I think it, <laughs> I think they put missing child on like they put that out as if there were all these people stealing kids like predator. You're talking I, about like on the milk milk and on the in the paper on the news. I just feel a like a lot of missing children. There was so many missing kids when Where we were kids. Where are you kids. from? Chicago. I feel like it happened all the time. I feel like as a kid I heard it a lot and my mom was like, "This is why you can't be alone late at night out places. You got to be careful. Got to be. I was like, this isn't predators. This is parents leaving kids and blaming it on. They were like, yeah, somebody must have taken them. They left them. They just my left dad's them. from Canada. They don't do that in Canada. I don't think he realizes. Yeah. You don't know how it works down here, pal. Yeah. <laughs> down no, here. I've we do things a little bit different, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, by the way, Canada and in, in the in the medals race for the Olympics. You guys fared pretty well. What did we do? I didn't follow Canadian. I think Olympics. you did terrible. I was just being a little facetious. I think you guys bombed. Did you watch the Olympics? I watched a fair amount of them. Did you find that it, it, it almost looked like a joke? It, there was like very obscure yeah. uh, sports. I like diving a lot. I get it. I get that. Because it it freaks me. I can't dive. You know, uh, Rich. You, huh? you met Rich. Who, Rich, uh, raise uh, your uh, hand. Uh, Which uh, one is Rich? He's not in the room. Oh. oh, there he is. Rich is a diver. Oh, Rich, Rich. Oh, I know Rich. I'm thinking you're talking about someone. It's one of the Rich, other. Rich is a diver. Is a high diver in college. Really? Yes. He could have been Olympic. He's got but he a great, he's got a great bod. He's kept a good bod. You can tell Rich cares about what he puts inside of his body. I didn't notice that. I don't Why? know if he cares what 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 part of his body he puts in other people, but I Rich cares what he puts inside of his body because he's a diver. He's a diver. He's a beautiful. No, were you Rich a high does. 
What? Rich cares. Rich cares about his body. He's always doing push-ups and sit-ups everywhere he goes. You can tell. He does. Yeah. You he can does. Tell. <laughs> he Go just ahead. ate like a whole huge dog bowl of yogurt too. Yeah, throughout that makes this whole sense. Episode. What does that do? I don't know, but he's always eating yogurt. You know, Rich has Pyrenees <laughs> disease. You know that, right? Rich is bad. Rich you is have a, a he's Pyrenees. A lef- he's a lefty, though. Are you uh, signaling? Does your do you signal with your penis? Well, a lot of people say, "How's it hanging?" That's what they. That's why. Yeah, how Pyrenees. Is, how is it hanging? Well, it's hanging, hanging Pyrenees stuff. No, but you were a diver. He's talking yeah. about it. He liked that. Were you yeah, a high I, diver? I like yeah, diving. Yeah, yeah. Diving was amazing. Yeah. He was a high okay. diver, or were you off the? Yeah, low no, I board? did all the three meter, the platform, all that stuff. What's the highest one? Uh, Ten meter. Ten meters, yeah. Jackie. Quick, how high is that? Go and how many feet? Go. Third. I don't know. I only taught. Why did you do that? Let her try. Oh, because yeah. uh, we're me and my daughter are very competitive. And uh, I wanted to be oh, faster. that's right. You want to be first. Okay. Yeah, I feel it. She gets her competitiveness from me. What was you your... know what I like? What? Speed walking. Have you seen the videos of like? Oh yeah, speed walking the is shorts? so funny. And then people, the che- you know, they catch the them cheating. And they, they flag them if they if you lift up your your one foot has to be on the gra- surface of the ground while the other foot touches. Otherwise, no, it's running. No, so you guys didn't notice the most important part of speed walking. Caroline, oh. I don't know if you can get a video of a close-up of the crotches during speed walking, but there's a lot of, like, swinging back and forth and swaying. Why do we need to see that now? Yeah, why do we need to see that? <laughs> you're not even I'm in the just... room, so it's just me and Andrew sitting here looking at Dick <laughs> swinging because you're requesting that? That's which, not... Which, let me tell you something. I'm fine with... I just don't know if the audience wants to watch us watching Dick swinging. I like it. I think it. they do. All right. Well, I was amazed that they had, I, I, I was trying to talk about it on stage, I could never make it work, but it seemed like there were very obscure, um, very obscure sports, mm-hmm. like um, I saw the women's 800 meter, what are we looking at? We're going to zoom in on these penises real fast here. What are you here. doing? Let's take a break and we'll really? zoom in on these penises, I guess. <laughs> really, Jackie? We no, have a I guest over I'm, and you are no, no, requesting no, let, dick pics? Let me tell you something. She's married. She has kids. This is their thing now. That she gets to see I'm dick bored. swinging. Yeah, that she's bored. <laughs> wow. This is Friday. Look, look at on the on the left. That's Dirty Sanchez. Dirty Sanchez. There he is. There he is, right there on the left. And then there's balls behind chin. Balls on your chin is right there. Where where is it? Balls and chin. B- balls, balls right and on chin. your chin. Yes. Yep. And uh And then there's a kayak. That man is named Kayak. Yes. Kayakin. And the one behind is just uh, Lopez. That's just regular old, good old-fashioned Lopez. Just Lopez. I got to right. tell you something. The sprinters, I did notice, because the sprinters wear remarkably tight shorts, and sometimes they have very little penises, and it shows, and it does make me feel a little better about myself, because these men are in phenomenal shape. They've got, they're jacked, they're, and they've got... Really See, little I penises, and I, I was, like it. If I was a runner, one of the strategies in these little shorts that I would do is I would... Um, Tuck. No, i do the opposite. I would uh, um, pleasure myself right uh, before the race oh. so that I have an advantage crossing the, the finish line. Oh, uh, right, you get there first. Yes. You know, you won by a nose. Well, no, that's not a nose. <laughs> you know, that's... It's a head. Pardon me? It's a head. Yeah. I don't want to hear that from you, Jack. His head leaned <laughs> out. His head crossed the line first. <laughs> He's ahead. He's ahead. He's ahead. Yes. Um, he won by a head. He won yeah. by one head. Just the tip. Just the tip. <laughs> won by just the tip. Just broke the line. Look at, the, look at the, I love that all these guys are swinging. Look at the photographers taking shots up their shorts. Is it? Yeah. This is, look, these people, why are the photographers lying down on their tummies? Well, that's the crotch crew. You don't know that? That's a, that's a real thing. That's the crotch crew in the Olympics. That's their whole job is to just get pictures for Jackie. And people like Jackie. <laughs> That's crotch, crotch crew, baby. The crotch crew. Yeah, I did. I did see enough of the Olympics uh, uh, to to say that I enjoy, I tried to enjoy watching it. But what I was amazed at, as I saw the uh, female canoe slalom. Hmm. Did you see that? No. So they have their the, the women are in a canoe. Got it. With a paddle on, like it looked like a white water rafting kind of like there, there's a, a huge current. Okay. And then they have to slalom in and out of these. They're, they're actually hanging in the air, so the, these buoys. Uh-huh. So they got to slalom through that white water rafting. Wow. But I'm just saying uh, canoe, canoe paddlers. There yeah. they are. But that's they call them canoes. They look like uh, kayaks to me, but they, they call them canoes based on the... Uh, but see, there it is. She has to go around that pole. You yeah. see how she has to go around that pole? But... It seems like an obscure sport to give your entire life to, and we haven't heard anything about it. Yeah. 
And then the guy announcing it would go, oh, she missed that. She missed that uh, buoy. So that's a double bong bong, oh, double bong bong. We, bong, take, bong off, we, we take off two points. Like, I don't know what these, but it was on primetime television on NBC. And I didn't really understand what I was watching or how to score it or who was better than others. And then there's the two men Olympics paddles. The, like there, what is that? 212 Olympic canoeing hopefuls. This feels like most countries just send the best athletes. They're like, look, we don't, there is no team for this, but Mike is good in the water. Just put him in one of these things. <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's no way this is like a thing in most places. I think that this sport exists and then we just fill it in as need be. I, now you just explain it to me because I, not only did I think it was obscure, I thought, how can you have this in every country? Because the announcer would go, and there's Ushkovic Meyer. Oh, from no. Ushkovic Meyer is very good. Yes. That's yes. what he would say. Everybody yeah. knows we got to watch him. That's what they were waiting for. And, and everybody says that's what we're waiting for. There's nobody in the stands because of COVID. Yeah. I don't know that there'd be anybody in the stands for this, even without COVID. There is. There, they usually do just because it's a thing to do. And this is also, it's like uh, at a music festival. Like everyone's going to go to the big stage to watch the best band. These little bands. No one goes, so it's easier. I go over there to watch the little bands because nobody's there. You so get front row to the little band. So this is wet cella. This is wet cella right here. Yes, so that's what that is. I didn't. I didn't. Did you watch uh, Lady uh, Lift uh, Weightlifters? I saw. We showed it on me and Bobby Lee show that a Korean yeah woman won the gold for the first time. Yes. No. Oh, oh my God, that's wrong. Yeah. A Filipino woman won the gold for the first time, or won a medal for the first time. It was pretty impressive to watch. I think weightlifting is just, I don't get it as a sport. I get it as like getting in shape. I get it for women, not for men. Why is that? I don't know. Okay. I just, when I saw the woman doing it, I just thought, I've never seen anything like this in my life. And what a great. Jacked. Yeah. I mean, look at how jacked some of these chicks are. It's huge, just like, that oh is. Oh my God. Like, look at her. I'm trying to, there's your That's USA. how you blow out your perineum right there. That's exactly how you. You blow. know what bothers me when I look at that picture right there? Mm. What do you think bothers me? What is that center wet spot? Oh, you. Uh, that's uh, that's her stop, heart. Stop! Stop! That's her, <laughs> leave that's it, her leave heart it. exploding from her chest. Who knows? That could be just a little bit, little bit of sweat, a little bit of sweat. Maybe okay. she. Maybe that's the part. I don't even know. Is that the uh, Filipino? No, that's USA. No, that's USA. We're the best. We can only show USA on this show. Oh my God! There's a lot of wetness. Yeah. 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 See, this doesn't look cool or fun to me i mean props to that's great that they do it i just I, it's weird to watch people lift i like watching a an event a back and forth event i like team sport competition i'm not good at individual stuff like this is not fun for me to watch what about the fact on the volleyball you said diving diving is individual <sighs> well you're part of a team yeah i guess it is but i just i guess it's more impressive to do f eight flips in the sky than it is to lift heavy things I don't mean to disrespect Maybe. weightlifters, but it's no, we're going to get a lot, a lot of, of weightlifters from there. She is right there, though. Yeah, that was. Oh, but she's in. She looks like Hidlin Diaz. Yeah, she won for for Philippines for the first time. They've never the first Olympic gold. But Perhaps. that's amazing. She looks amazing and everything. I'm not. Yeah, happy for them. I just think like technically. When you saw China and diving and you watch the technicality, it's impressive to watch. This is to me is how can you lift it? This sport should be just called Kenya. But lifting. why I, I'm amazed that you don't appreciate it because I remember the last time we spent some time together yeah. after the iPod at Supernova, all you've been talking about and on stage yeah. is your back. I know. So I have sciatica. Somebody, I know, but somebody with a bad back should appreciate the ability <laughs> to do that. To do that, don't it's, you think? Okay, so what you're what you're hearing is jealousy, Howie. I, I'm jealous that I can no longer lift weights above my head because I have a herniated disc. Do you really? Yeah. And what are you doing about it? Are you going to have surgery? Uh, no, you don't need sur surgery. Is kind of last on the list. You'll see me shift my left leg often during this because it gets it pinching the nerve. Sitting is probably the worst thing I can do. You want to stand up? No. Okay. This sitting is the worst <laughs> thing to do. Sitting, sitting with a herniated disc, my L four, L five, it presses again. So what happens? The herniation between the disc it pushes out, almost like when you squeeze one part of a balloon and then the air flows out, and it's pinching your sciatic nerve, which runs down 
right. one side of your I notice that people with back problems uh, are always really specific on the L4 or the L5. Or like, your S1. It depends on, well, because they diagnose you. They say, this is where your herniation is. I know, is. but then you tell a layman like me or other people, they go, how's your back? Well, the L4 is a little out <laughs> and it's shifted up to my S1. Like we're supposed to, oh, you oh, should, but I you see. should know. You should know what that is. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what. But I've learned. I didn't expect. Like, you're incredibly funny and smart and a good actor. And, Thank and you. But I did not expect to have so much um, uh, anatomy education from the time you came in. It started with. It's the, something uh, that I. I'm a big advocate of anatomy. I've been pushing it around. Most pods I go to, I start talking right away about anatomic stuff. Right, the pierogi and the taint and the. Correct. Can I tell you why I think he does that with his back and like why he is so specific because mm -hmm. everyone says i'm not waiting for a yes or a no i'm just gonna go for it but anyways <laughs> anyone's everyone says that they have a bad back everyone has a bad back and i feel like people write it off but if you're really specific with a diagnosis then people realize that you actually have a problem yeah you know it's true that's true. Like I if you to... went to a doctor, you have a diagnosis, you have a legitimate problem, and you're not just being all complainy with back issues. Yeah, complainy. I'm not a com yeah. I am complaining, but it's legitimized because the pain is unbelievable. My ginger sister has something. What, oh, what did you I say? had to get steroid injections in my L6. So, <laughs> yeah. Are you but are you good now? I'm good now. That was in high school though, because I had a really bad back because I played volleyball. Yeah, you did you did you blow out your back at one point? Did you get a hernia or something? No, mine was from hyperextending. I, yeah, 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 because yeah, yeah, I was yeah, a yeah. setter. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So. yeah, yeah. Oh, she's a setter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yes. she's an Irish setter with the red yes. hair. Yes, that makes she's sense. an Irish setter. I, I and that's it. not me calling you a dog. I apologize. Okay, I do know that I could be twisted that. into a way that would be. <laughs> I meant Irish because your hair, but Irish setter is also a dog. Anyway, speaking of dog, is a dog barking? Yes. Is that your dog, Jackie? <laughs> Yes. No, that's how she farts. <laughs> that is? Yeah, we're yeah. going to get that That's checked. a little bit more pleasant than yeah. the other one. A lot way, of people fart, she barks. <laughs> what well, did you eat? She's lactose intolerant, I, and that's the sound that comes out. I know, out. she's your daughter. She would be lactose intolerant. She doesn't have a choice, does she? She does. Are you lactose intolerant? No, I'm not. Uh, maybe. Mom no, your, says your I lactose am. nervous, your lactose anxiety. There's something, you're lactose uh, par partially intolerant. There's no doubt about it. Maybe. I love I that know. you mom, set up your microphone in the dog run. Yeah, that was nice. What kind of dog is that? <laughs> it's a mutt. I don't know. It's a whole bunch of... We thought it was a multi-poo. Like, yeah. we were specifically getting a multi-poo. And then I did one of those DNA tests, like the doggy DNA test. And it's not. It's everything. Hmm. It's mixed with, like... It's mostly Italian. It's 80% Italian, right? Yeah. <laughs> any, is any yeah. part of it native? Any Native American? 23 and me. <laughs> he did that. For dogs, Have yeah. Have you done that test? No chance. Why? I would never send my blood to a private company why what is your fear why why uh, why uh, why would i send my blood my dna to a private company that gets to keep it then in perpetuity for the rest of time first That's, of all it's not your blood i it's, did it's it your, okay it's, it's your dna uh-huh which is the same thing your blood dna is what i'm referring to the dna in your blood your urine whatever i don't want a private corporation to have that why in the medical field i'm fine with it because if i'm going to a doctor and we need to diagnose something because a private company then has your DNA in perpetuity. That's a little strange. Why do they want your DNA? Well, they, they and what could they do with it? Literally, they could anything. tell you what your ancestry is. They could also use your DNA for research. For yeah, you have to give them when you submit it. You have to give them permission to use your DNA for research. So Yuck. you have to sign something if you want it. If you yeah. don't want them using your DNA for any research, then you don't sign it. Do you think they're really listening to that? <laughs> Yeah, I do. But what is your, in your worst case scenario, what is your worst fear that they would do? Imagine they use your DNA to, to start cloning people or submitting your DNA for unsolved crimes and they start throwing in you a mix of also, just using it illegally. I just get scared of like, why would my DNA be valuable to a private company? And there's a reason for sure. They're doing it because they want to collect DNA. We think it's because they want to tell us what our heritage is, but I don't believe that. I get very suspicious of a company collecting human DNA. I know they were also using the I'm DNA I'm definitely that a conspiracy theorist. Are you? 100%. I think we have one here too. Jeremy? Yeah. Do you agree with that? Jeremy completely agrees here. Uh, yeah, I kind of do. <laughs> Why do you kind of get all in, dude? No, don't do, don't put do, a I foot do. in the hot tub. Go I, I in. Do. I do not kind of. Yeah, because it because a private corporation that has no government regulation 
that's a little sketchy to me. It's a little sketchy for them to harbor your DNA forever. That's like, hmm, they can do whatever they want with it. But Even though it, Jackie's like, like, I didn't sign a paper. It's like, that will never hold up after time. They'll already have done what they wanted to do. So what if they clone me and make me like a super soldier? How awful. Why? Because once we start playing God, we're all dead. Once we start cloning, they've already cloned for sure. Right. She's a clone. You know that, right? The, the redhead? The yeah, follow, I've Caroline? Met, I've, is met, I've met Caroline 10 times already. Today? No, just this year, though. Are you a clone? I might be a stalker. Sure, yeah, man. That's so what did we learn yeah. today? We learned uh, three more uh, terms for Grendel. Correct. Uh, wait, we, wait, wait. Before wait. we go, though, yeah. I think it's only fair, since he pranked me, that we try to do a prank before he goes. Okay. Okay. Who do you want to call? Ghostbuster. Who would you like to call? Oh, look at this. They've got this. Do, um, do you have any friends that would call, be funny? Is Bobby you working? You call Bobby. We could call Bobby, but he's hard to prank because he's he's um. He, he knows. Yeah, he knows. He knows so well. Gata, oh, Alex! Gata, Gata, Alex, Gata's, my brother just told me we can't do a prank. We can't record it. Why? Is there a reason why? Is it because I'm on? I can get off so you guys can record it. Yeah, no, we just have... So since you're virtual, you're coming into our feed that we normally bring in the... No, uh, you would get phone. off. So yeah, yeah. If, you, if you go off, we can switch the audio feed to the phone. Right, that makes... Right. You'd have to go away. I'll All right, go so away, say, say goodbye. Just, or I just put the phone... We can just put a phone up to the mic. That always works. No, let you go away, Jackie. Okay, I'll go away. That's the but name of the nice show. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. That's the name of the show. You go away, Jackie. <laughs> and then I'll listen to this prank when it comes out. I Perfect. guess. Perfect. All right. All right. So, Bye. so Bye, Jackie. Da so Dave, I can't. And Gata is on a plane right now. I just was on. I've just. I just uh, talked to uh, his manager. So, well, let's see who else. What do you have out there? You had other suggestions. If what we are the call. other suggestions? So, are we calling together? As we a, can. As a, yeah, we should. We should call someone yeah. together. Well, let's get a couple's massage. But let's call the massage place and let's ask for a pretty high amount of demands because it's our anniversary. Yeah. Okay. So this is... Uh, oh, wait, we, we can't say the name, so you'll yeah, bleep it but off. You, but you can see the right number, right, Howie? Uh, I know. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I sometimes... I type what in... Are you say, what are you trying to say? That, uh, You're trying to be a bully in, uh, behind glass? <laughs> it's you redheads. By the way, how does my yams look on here, huh? How do my yams look? Not bad? You're calling them yams, yeah, not these dams? Yeah, these are my yams. These are my yams. Are there crotch shots? Is this a crotch shot at all? You can see my crotch? J-Dog is in charge can of the Can you see up my shorts, J-Dog? You can? Yeah, you're like a speed walker. I want to crop it out, though. You're good. Crotch it out. Can you really see up my shorts? You can't see up them, but... Well, you can come in here, Caroline, and look up his shorts no. if can't, you want. Wait, can you re have you really seen up my shorts at all? No, you can't see Why up are you so concerned? <laughs> Why are you Because I, I don't want my my uh, per, my perineum on camera. <laughs> perineum? Or your pierogi or whatever that is. Your call is the oh, get real. Why, why, why would it go to a machine right away? <laughs> I don't know. Are they not open? Uh, they know. They should be open. I Tuesdays? tried to call them last week. You called them last week. Why did you call them? I always call. The massage parlor? Yeah. Okay. I'm pretty sure they come to your house, too. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. No, this no. Isn't. Might have to try a different one. Dang it. Nobody answered the phone. Uh, we tried <laughs> to, do a, to do a prank. It just didn't work. But I love you. I love you. We too. tried. We did. Um, I can't wait to see you do stand up again. By the way, I didn't get to say this. Um, watching you on stage has been really cool at supernova too and seeing rich all the time it's kind of that part's a little i am getting old of seeing him he's there every time yep does he have to go every time with us he he you know the i'm gonna be totally honest with you he gives me I, the finger when i i go hey rich and he just flicks me off and i'm like all right dude that's a weird greeting i don't know rich you don't no, but he's been every place for the last five years, so I just kind of go along with it because uh, I'm afraid to. Com I don't like confrontation. He's I a clone. Is he really? Did you 23 and me, Richard? I did. You <laughs> son of. No, but it is great to see you thank on stage. You, buddy. I, I it's do think it's always awesome. great to watch you. It's always thank great you. to see you. I can't thank you enough for coming in. Thank you. And uh, this was Howie Mandel and Jacqueline Schultz mm. doing stuff. It's Howie Mandel and, does stuff. And. 
And Andrew Santino. Andrew Santino. No, I know. But she ended the show before I... I, I like the music. 